As I've stated in a previous video, there is so much more to discover about the African continent as it relates to history. For various reasons, Africa, especially below the Sahara, has not been fortunate enough to have frequent archaeological digs or investigations. Thankfully, a relatively recent archaeological dig has made a fantastic discovery that reveals what they believe to be a royal residence inhabited by the early rulers of the West African Kingdom of Gao, a region in modern-day Mali. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. If you like this content, you can support the continued development of these videos on Patreon.com. There you can find sources and more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our black truth is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can download the app at Google Play or the App Store, and you can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. All links to everything in the description box below. Information on 10th century West Africa is usually heavily focused on the Ghana Empire, also known as the Wagadu Empire. Local writers and Arab writers tended to highlight the economic powerhouse that Ghana was. Some writers even mentioned that Ghana had twin cities, one dedicated for merchants and another more centered around the Soninka elite. But we've often neglected other West African states that were considered to be just as powerful by some accounts. The early history of Gao is a little controversial because of the scarcity of information. There are about three categories of information surrounding the Kingdom of Gao. These categories include medieval Arab writers local writers from Timbuktu, and finally, oral transmission. All of these categories have their minor problems, but in general, they present a decent foundation. Gao was one of the oldest and most important commercial centers in West Africa. Since the beginning of the first millennium BC, Gao was linked with North African coastal cities by the route des chariots that Henry Lott reconstituted from the rock paintings dispersed in the mountains of the central Sahara. Later, the Kingdom of Gao began to become more popular amongst Muslim writers as early as the 9th century. According to al Yakubi, Gao was the greatest of the realms of the Sudan in his time. He claimed it to be the most important and most powerful. Gao was known to Muslim writers as al Khalqa. Over time, Ghana overtook it as an economic powerhouse but Gao was still very powerful. Muslim writers also tell us that the Kingdom of Gao possessed twin cities just like Ghana. One city being a commercial center filled with Muslim merchants largely from North Africa and the other being a royal residence with more local people and elites. Between Tadamaka and the town of Kaka is a distance of nine stages. This town consists of two towns one being the residence of the king and the other inhabited by the Muslims. The king is called Kanda. They worship idols as do the other Sudan. When their king sits down, a drum is beaten. The Sudanese women dance with their thick hair flowing and nobody in the town goes about his business until he has finished his repast, the remnants of which are thrown into the Nile. When a king ascends the throne, he is handed a signet ring, a sword, and a copy of the Quran, which, as they assert, were sent to them by the commander of the faithful. Their king is a Muslim, for they entrust the kingship only to Muslims. As we can see, the rulers of Gao during this time were local Muslims, but the rest of the populace in the principal city adhered to their traditional African beliefs. The two cities are known by archaeologists as Gao Sane and Gao Ancient. Some archaeological work has been done in Gao in general, but no one actually found the so-called twin cities of the early Arab writers. In the 70s, some buildings were discovered, but interruptions to the dig made the excavators unable to continue. But thankfully, from 2001 through 2004, Archaeological work was able to move forward in the region of the merchant town of Gaosane, 
and Gao Ancient, the royal town. At Gao Sane, they found iron slag indicating that iron was manufactured in large amounts. Swords, knives, and nail fragments were all visible. Also, glass, copper items, and diverse pottery were discovered. According to the archaeologists, these findings suggest that Gao Sane was not only a mercantile town but also a manufacturing one. If this reading is accepted, our findings will cast new light on industrial development in West Africa from the 8th to the 10th centuries. All these peculiarities suggest that the main inhabitants of Gao Sane would have been merchant manufacturers from North Africa who would have coexisted with the local population as suggested by the diverse forms and techniques of pottery. So it seems as though one of the twin cities was a place where North African merchants stimulated the economy of the kingdom. In the northern area of Gao, archaeologists refer to it as Gao Ancient. This is where the monument of Askia the Great was built much later in the 15th century. Archaeologists located an open space where, according to local tradition, Manza Musa built his mosque on his return from Mecca. In Gao Ancient, we found two large buildings constructed completely of stone in the area where local people say Kakan Musa had constructed his mosque on his return from Mecca. These buildings are so immense that we have not yet finished exposing them. The entrance to these stone wall developments was decorated with fine fired bricks and the thickness was consistently 1.2 meters and it was made from a combination of flat schist slabs and round sandstones reinforced by clay plaster. The eastern wing of the building is composed of four ranges of stone walls, so the building, according to the archaeologists, proved to be very immense. Here, we can see the plan of the buildings of Gao Ancient, which looks like a pretty big area. Interestingly enough, a modern house now stands on top of the western wing of the building making it impossible to enlarge the excavation to discover if it's even bigger. In the northern section of the Gao ancient excavations was found another smaller building containing some rooms. Inside the rooms are two ranges of columns made of smaller schist slabs. Two layers of white and red plaster are painted inside the walls, meaning that this room must have been very beautifully decorated. This residence contains two other rooms one of which is a bathroom equipped with a drain pipe under a corner of the floor made of pebbles. I find it interesting that some modern luxury house designs today have pebbles in bathrooms. It's so exciting to see that Africans were doing this all the way in the 10th century. We don't know if the pebbles in the bathroom were functional or not, but its very existence is fascinating nonetheless. According to the archaeologists, the findings at Gao Ancient were much more significant and important. At this location, most of the valuable goods were in the main room of the smaller residence, including a round brass trim, an iron sword inlaid with some brass asterisks, a bracelet made of several hundreds of brass small rings, and a probable small jewel box decorated with a brass ornament. There are also 40 fragments of luster pottery imported from North Africa and from China. These findings are noteworthy because nothing like this has been found in West Africa for that time frame. All the evidence suggests that the smaller building discovered at Gao Ancient was a royal palace of some sort. A palace protected by a kind of large stone-built citadel. Archaeologists suggest that the center of power was held at Gao Ancient and that power was consolidated at Gao Sane, where the merchant manufacturers from North Africa would have cohabitated with the local population as mentioned before. Concerning the people who originally built these buildings at Gao Ancient, it's assumed it was the Songhai or at least a branch of the Songhai people known as the Soroko or Sorko people. They are largely credited as the masters or founders of the early Gao kingdom and their rulers would have extended their rule into Gao Sane to take advantage of the economic development advanced primarily by North African merchants. 
hence the popular Twin Cities narrative mentioned by Arab writers. The most beautiful thing in this discovery is that not only have we learned so much about West African history, but the archaeologists acknowledge that they have only just discovered 10% of Gao Ancient and that there are other buildings still left to be discovered. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh. Hey, hey.